All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to help you visualize how MDX is different from SQL or from any other language that you've ever worked with in this video. So we're really dealing with visualization, the logic of MDX in this video. When we come back into the next video, we're going to introduce a few terms uh, and some other concepts, and then we're going to actually get into writing it. But I, I'm doing this because, in my mind, this is the best way to learn the fundamentals. I can show you syntax all day long, but if you don't understand why we're dealing with the syntax, then you will not be able to understand the language at a fundamental level, in my opinion. Now there are there are lots of ways to teach this. I'm not the first, I'm not the tenth or even the hundredth person to try to write a course or an article or a video or whatever on MDX, right? I, this is no, no original material exists in this space. Uh, we're given a language and it's really how you explain it that brings in the personality or the uh, what would be the, the way of explaining it is the style of the presenter, right? So my style is to go with a visual representation here. And I hope it works. It works for me, and I've seen it work for a lot of people. So let's jump into it, and I, I think it'll help you as well. So let's talk about this idea of visualizing what we're trying to accomplish. That's what I want to talk to you about in this video. And I, I truly believe that if you can see MDX, then you will have an easier time writing the MDX. So if you can actually see what you're trying to do, then writing the MDX is just a matter of looking at a chart and saying, okay, I need this, 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 and that. Okay. Now let's talk about one dimensional data here. Now let me, let me do this. We're kind of familiar with a line and having a plot, right? And so here's position zero, position one, position two, position three, four, right? And if I say this is the value 37, and this is the value Joe, and this is the value 16, and then I say, hey, what is the value for position two? Well, then you just have to look at a single dimensional space and you say, oh, well, the answer to your question is that the value for position two is 16. Like this is, starts with zero, so the, the first position is the position zero in this uh, index. So one dimensional data, but really, really easy stuff. Right? Now, two dimensional data, not really that much different, right? We just have uh, X and Y. We have lines, right? So we have positions, and I'm just going to put little tick marks up here to save myself the time, right? Right, so here is zero right in the middle. That would be zero comma zero, right? We're at the zero on X and the zero on Y, and then we would have, like, this would be one right there, would be one and then negative one, so we're on a flat two-dimensional plane here. We're simply viewing the data along a radar uh, chart, if you uh, are familiar with that, just an XY coordinate base, right? These are both one-dimensional, two-dimensional, easy ways of describing data. We can do it without a 3D representation. We can just do it drawing lines right here. So it's two-dimensional. Anytime you want a point, you need two coordinates. If I want this point right here, I need to say that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2. So that's 3, comma, 2. Okay? Two-dimension. Now when we start to get into relational systems, that's what really we are working with. If I want to know the, the city for someone with an address ID of 10, then I say, okay, give me for 10, show me the city. Okay, so it's a two-dimensional space. I say, for address ID 10, show me city. Two-dimensional space. Now, when you get into three-dimensional data, it becomes a little bit more difficult to show you without being next to you, right? <laughs> I mean, that is the 3D world that we live in. It is hard to demonstrate in a flat graphic like what we're seeing here, a three-dimensional space. But I like this one. It shows maybe a half of a cube, if you will, where we have three spaces now. We have X, 
y, but we also now have z. And whenever I want to plot a point here, I have to provide three coordinates. I have to say the value for x, put in our parentheses here, I say that I want 2 on x, 4 on y, and 2 on z. And then so we'd say, okay, 0, 1, 2, and then 4, and then it'd be somewhere right here in the space, right, in the three-dimensional space. That is a three-dimensional data view. And this is really difficult to explain here in a flat graphic. I mean, you know, we need, a, we need to make a diorama or we need a little box so that you and I can drop a ball in there and say, you see where that ball is? That ball is where 2, 4, and 2 intersect. <laughs> but we don't have that, right? So I need you to have a little bit of imagination with me while we're working through and look at this. Okay? All right, so that's your three-dimensional data. Now, when we start really working with a cube, it gets very, very difficult to explain how all of these various dimensions relate to one another. We've got a customer dimension, a time dimension, a geography dimension, a salesperson dimension. We have 20 dimensions and five measure groups. We have all of this data, and it, it gets difficult to explain. And so I can, I love this visualization here for explaining that 3D space. Notice that anytime we want a piece of data here, we're dealing with the intersection between the planes. Okay? We're dealing with the intersection between the dimensions. A row of data does not exist here. This is not about rows and columns. It is the intersection of the dimensions that creates the data. We have a dimension over here, time. We have a dimension over here, geography. We have a measure, sales. And it is where time and geography meet that the sales measure is calculated. It's not a row of data like it is in just your flat relational space. So I'm going to use this visualization several times over. However, most of the time that you work with data and you're dealing with multidimensional data and you see uh, explanations of MDX, you're, you're using the cube, right? Why? Because it's easier to draw a cube, right? <laughs> right? It's easy to visualize a cube. Most people grew up with Rubik's Cubes or playing with cubes. Very few of us created these types of diagrams. And we certainly can't just hand write those when we're trying to draw a diagram on a whiteboard in an office, right? So it's easy to understand why this term cube won out. It's a very easy thing to explain. It's a very easy thing for us to draw. Now here's an important concept for you. Analysis services actually puts all of the measures in a dimension called measures. When we're querying our cube with MDX, we're actually querying the measures dimension. And we'll see that syntactically. I'll show you how that actually works. But imagine it in this little diagram here as being the blue plane. And if you're having difficulty seeing uh, the colors in this one, the blue plane kind of crossing all of the other dimensional planes right here. Okay? So it intersects with all of the other planes here. Right? So it actually creates another dimension. It's not a separate data type or data storage. That's how analysis services actually uses the data and exposes the data to us through MDX. It creates it as another dimension called measures. Right? And let me, let me say that again. Even though when you are in Visual Studio, you're working in your cube, you create measures and measure groups in the cube space, when we query the cube using MDX, it's just another dimension. Right? And that's really, really important when we get to working with things like cross join and other pieces of the puzzle that we'll see a little bit later. Right? So this kind of tells us right here why we can actually visualize this as 3D. Imagine uh, along the x-axis down here, this could be time, uh, this could be geography, and then here's our measures here. My pen, sorry. 
then along this one, this is I'll just put M for uh, the measures right there. And these are our measures. And we want to calculate the measure in a specific time geography space. Then we have to go to that three-dimensional coordinate, 2, 4, 2, right? That would actually give us the measure where time and geography intersect right at that point. All right, so last uh, video we said in MDX, it's the intersection of dimensions that is of interest to the user. Right? Remember when we were talking about comparing it to SQL, we said something to the effect of SQL, it's the rows that the users want, it's the rows and the column data that they want, but not in MDX or not in analysis services. In analysis services, it's the intersection of those dimensions. We want to know where X, time, y geography meet with z at 2 comma 4 comma 2 that's what we're interested in right? because we're going to load it up with all of the time members right this is our job we're going to load the cube up with every time member possible we're going to load the cube with every dimension and we're going to load the measures with all of the facts but what we don't know when we load the cube is what the values are at the various intersection points. And that's what analysis services does. It calculates all of that for us. Pre-stores it, calculates it on the fly, depending on how we have our cube set up. Okay, so I'll tell you what, let's do this. We're I hate staying in lecture mode for too long, but there are some important concepts that we have to get into before we can start writing some code. So let's do this. Let's talk about how the select statement works, and then I promise we're going to get into writing code the very next video.